Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part two of reproducing the cooking chain from the Sutton Hoo ship burial. So I'm using the same reference, uh, which is a book entitled The Sutton Hoo Ship Burial by Rupert Bruce Mitford. Uh, copyright belongs to the trustees of the British Museum. And in particular, I am using the drawings by Mrs. Valerie Fenwick. So in this part, we're going to start on the second part of the chain, which is a decorative swivel. Now, in this video, we're only actually going to have time to do the braided center section. Uh, so this part will be spread out over two videos. So we'll start by measuring the part on the drawing and then do some complicated mathematical equations in order to obtain the length of the finished part, which will be seven inches or 176 millimeters if you prefer your measurements in French. So I am using wrought iron and I have this section of uh, inch and one eighth round and I will take it to three eighths round partly with a spring swage I made for a different job but before I use a spring swage I will rough out the bar to the correct section just using the drawing dies on the power hammer. The power hammer is replacing a actual human striker uh, this just means that I can obtain the correct section in an hour rather than over the course of say seven or eight hours so it's not a tough choice to make. So I've roughed it out to a square section and using the spring swage I will knock off the corners of those of that square section and then once I have knocked off the corner I will feed the bar into the swage and that will take it to the final 3 8 dimension. So 3 8 is approximately 10 mil by the way. I think it's like daft like 9.525 mil. So and as you can see those 10 inches of inch and an eighth drew out quite long when reduced down to 3 eighths of an inch. So that 3 eighths of an inch I will then go under the power hammer again and flatten to make a flat section. Now I've made a stop for the power hammer for this. I uh, could just as easily, easily have done it by eye. Uh, the stop just makes it a bit more accurate. So the stop is the correct section and I will just flip it 90 degrees in order to dress the 3 8 to the correct size. So and that lengthen the bar by another 9-10 inches I believe. Uh, it's much taller than me now. So this ended up being 80 inches long so I cut it down into four sections 20 inches long each and I will take two of those and just tack them together. So if I'd thought a little bit further ahead I could have just left it as one piece and folded it down the middle and welded it up equally. So I'll take one heat to tack and one heat to weld. This is raw tire and it's self-fluxing, you don't need any borax, just get it up to a nice snowball heat. Uh, the nice thing about welding raw iron is you get a lovely liquid surface which is all the silicate content of the iron. Uh, so it's quite nice to weld with. So here are the two bits welded together. So the other two bits I will put either side in a nice iron sandwich and forge weld those into place. Now you could tack weld them with an arc welder or a MIG welder. You could wire them together. Uh, I'm just holding these freehand. Uh, so I do it often enough that it works for me. So again, one heat to tack, one heat to weld. Not really going to bother weld blending in these welds at the moment uh, because there are external components which will be forge welded to this part in the next video. And here is the part. So all four parts forge welded together at the end. We'll now head over to the vise and open this up. Uh, now I'm missing a couple of video shots here, I'm not sure why. But basically, I opened it up all the way, like so. And I'm actually missing the footage where I started the bends, but basically you want to bend the opposing bars and bend them nice and tight. 
So this clip here, I didn't quite get them down as tight as I should have, but as you can see here, not really much bother, so the opposing bars, flip them over and basically braid, braid them together. So, and to get the heat in the right place, I could have used a gas torch, but I am keen on doing this using as similar methods as possible to how the original would have made, been made so they didn't have the old gas axe back then so I will just lay it straight down on the fire like so and heat up all the bars at the same time and go from there so once that's done once your braid has reached the length that you want or you've run out of material I will just take the ends and push them together ready to forge weld. As you can see here I'm not wellying the iron to weld it, I'm just tapping it together and that's because iron forges out quite easily as compared to mild steel. So if you hit it too hard it will stretch out and flatten a lot more than you're used to if you use mild steel regularly. So keep an eye on that. So with both sides welded up I will start dressing it a little bit making sure that everything is nice and even, the braid's nice and even. Uh, with a gas torch I could have done this a lot tighter and neater. So with everything dressed I will go over to my good sturdy device and I will just pull it out a touch. That will give me the seven inches I need and even out the braid as well. As you can see I cooled off the bottom end because it was a bit loose on there already. So with all that done, give it a good scrub and I will tweak in the braids like so. Now you can see the braid is left right, left right, left right, the way the bars intertwine. If you look at the drawing by Mrs Valerie Fenwick you'll see that the braid is set up the same way, left right, left right, left right. So I think my section is a little bit chunkier than uh, the original section, not too, not too worried. As you can see, it's come out fairly decent. For the next episode we will forge those external elements and weld it all into place and offer it up to the ring. So thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you enjoy watching my videos, please consider donating on Patreon. Uh, here is my current list of Patreon donors and I will see you on the next one.